Oh, don't you still there? This is Jay over here. Good to see you way over there in France. And I and I we still have a lot of now. Here comes some questions, Odin, that have to do with the Quran. These are there are lots of questions on the Quran, and you have said quite a bit about the Quran. So we're gonna break these up into smaller bite size so that we don't take two hours trying to unpack. And here's the first one, and this is by a guy named Alair, A-L-A-I-R, who says this. I'm not sure that the audience fully understands why the drafts of the Proto-Quran were written without the diacritical marks. If those who wrote these drafts knew the diacritical marks, then they would have written these drafts with the diacritical marks. In other words, if the diacritical marks did exist in the 7th century, why didn't they use them, what he's asking. I thought that these drafts, he says, were written in Syro Aramaic or by Arabs with a Sarah Aramaic language in mind, but directly written in Arabic. Could you enlighten us? Because I believe this is an essential point. So if they're written in Syro Aramaic, doesn't the Syro Aramaic already have diacritical marks? He's kind of asking two questions. Don't doesn't the the Syro Aramaic already have the diacritical marks included? And if not, then why didn't they have because if the diacritical marks did exist in the seventh century, why didn't they write it with the diacritical marks? To me, to, to me, he's saying that doesn't make sense. Help us with that. Mm -hmm. You see, um, I think that at first there is um, a first point I have to make. Um, we have to look into history without the Islamic concepts in mind. There is this Islamic concept of the Quran that uh, the Muhammad preached the Quran and the Quran already kind of existed in the 7th century as an Islamic writing or as an Islamic um, sermon or preaching. But we don't know about this. The only thing we have is a, a collection of Quranic, so-called Quranic fragments. But we don't know whether those were Quran. And so we, we, we cannot um, we cannot say that um, the first fragments were written in order to be a Quran, a, an Islamic Quran. The only thing we can gather, this is my second point, from those very early fragments is what they have to tell us. They don't tell us, hey, we are part of an Islamic book, a sacred revelation. The only thing we see is a very very crude writing um, without diacritic marks, mostly, and um, in, a, in a very crude Arabic language, a very um, a language that is not um, very proficient. And this tells us that the people who wrote those fragments or who copied those fragments from other writings were not copying a sacred text. They were copying drafts and notes that were made with um, using a, a shorthand. You see, diacritic marks uh, already existed in the 7th century. We have um, found some papyri in Egypt, Arabic papyri, using, which used diacritic marks. This tells us that the um, early Quranic frag fragments were written without diacritic marks, were written so in purpose, because the diacritic marks existed. Not all of them, of course, but some existed. So if the writers did not use it, it was in purpose. And I think it was because they copied it from notes who were written without diacritic marks, and who writes like this? Not someone who wants to put down um, a sacred picture, uh, scripture, but someone who makes notes for himself and only for himself. He is the one, like you make notes for yourself, you are the only one who is really able to read it because you already know what's in it. 
So I think I'm going this, to come back uh, on this, and I think I think mm-hmm. that's true. If these were just private notes for your own study, that's not what he's asking, though. He's looking at these manuscripts here. These are not private notes. These are this is half the Quran right here. This is the Ma'il manuscript, uh, which is there in the British Library. Mm-hmm. Notice it doesn't have any diacritical marks. Uh, I don't see one diacritical mark here. Page after page after page after page. Now there are a I I, I lie. There are a few, but Rarely do you see any diacritical marks on all of these pages. This is an entire manuscript. This is fifty mm-hmm. percent of the Quran, right there. So that's the one. There's one. Okay. So that's not a fragment. Here's another one. This is the Petropolis manuscript that's in the Bibliothèque Nationale there in Paris. And you look at page after page after page. I I think this one here is at least. Tw- a quarter of the Quran is in this one here. So you can see, and then I'll, I can give you this one here. Here is the. This is almost the entire Quran. So this is 99% of the Quran. And you can see page after page after page. There are some dire critical marks that have been added at a later date in a different color. But when this was written, it had no dire critical marks. That's what he's asking. These are not mm-hmm. notes. These are not people's scribblings. These are not uh, footnotes that are done you know, to help because people. Uh, those, those manuscripts, those... These are full, man- not full manuscripts, but they are big manuscripts. And those manuscripts are, are not they the are original... They follow the Quran that we have today. Mm-hmm. Those manuscripts are not the original notes. They are copies that, that have been copied from the notes. So why didn't they include the diacritical marks is what he's asking in those manuscripts? No, no, he's not asking about uh, including the, the diacritical marks, but not including them. The, uh, I fully understood why the draft of the proto Quran, this is what Allah said, they wrote, were written without the diacritical marks. Yeah, and so he's asking, why were these drafts of the proto Quran were written without the diacritical marks? That's what he's asking. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And okay. I, I think it is because the um, original manuscripts, the originals were notes which were written for the private use of the preacher. And only for him, which tells us about the way the Quran was gathered and, and the way it was made. It was made by the, the gathering of notes and of notes of notes from preachers that were at, at, at originally they were not meant to be a book. They were meant to for him to prepare his um, his sermons. And, and to, to work on, 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 on his sermons, on his, on his preachings. Okay, so what are these then? Are these, these then the copies these were of that? Made, these were made afterwards. They, they were made as, um, I think, as a sort of um, um, teaching book for the Arabs. You see, um, and this is where you have to, to have the, the big picture in mind. You remember that... Um, the, the, um, what happened in the 7th century at the beginning, everything was about the coming of the Messiah, and this is what those, those preachings were about. Those sermons were about the alliance between Quran, uh, Quranic Nazarenes and Arabs and the conquest of Jerusalem and the rebuilding of the temple and the coming of the Messiah. But since the Messiah did not come, Arab leaders took it upon themselves to um, to make God's kingdom on earth. And some of them needed books to justify themselves, but they could not take Christian books or Jewish books. They needed books from their own. And what did they have in terms of Arabic writings? They only had the the, the preacher's notes. So they gathered the preacher's notes. They selected the, the, the notes that um, that were useful for them, and they, they they made it into a collection that was used as a sort of um, a, a teaching, but it was not really a sacred book. It was not a revelation. It was not a revelation at the moment. We have absolutely no clue in the seventh century of a sacred scripture, an Arabic sacred scripture. So what we can make out of out of those um, first so-called Qurans is that they were not um, 
um, revelations. They were not the, the divine books that the Muslims at the standard Islamic narrative nowadays say it is. And another proof of this is given by François Desroches himself when he studied the Petropolitanus uh, manuscripts. Because like you said, Jay, in, in this manuscript, you start to find diacritical marks. And in one of his articles, uh, I don't have the reference in mind, but it is in, on Gallet's website, on Edouard Marie Gallet's website. On one of his, art on his article, he, he wrote that um, there were several scribes, several people who wrote those uh, Petropolitanus uh, manuscripts because he recognized different way of writing and so on. And what he also found is that the diacritic, diacritic marks that those scribes were writing were, um, were not in order. They were not the same. They, they put it in the way they wanted. There was a, there was a sort of anarchy in, in those uh, diacritic marks. One scribe uh, wrote them like this for, uh, for a word. Another, another, another scribe wrote them differently for the very same word. And this tells us that the scribe did not know the meaning of what they were copying. And this is very, very important. And this, this tells us about the Quran. You see, this, they, 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 it means that at first, some people, maybe the first Arab leaders, gathered the notes and tried to make something out of it, a book. But the very meaning of those notes got lost um, or kind of lost because uh, they were not the one who wrote the notes. So they did not know about the, the very meaning. You see, when you make notes for yourself, you are able to, to reread yourself because you already know. When, you, when you're reading notes that have been made by, by someone else, it's very difficult. It might be very difficult to, to decipher the abbreviations, the writings, and in this particular case, the lack of diacritic marks. So you see, we got clues in those very early fragments of the um, process that gave birth to the Islamic Quran. Okay. Let me just feed back at you, just make sure I'm hearing you correct. What you're saying is in the seventh century, these different leaders call themselves Amirs, who are the mm -hmm. ones that we know we talked about earlier as the Muminun. They were the ones, the believers that followed them both religiously and politically. They were, they realized that they needed to have a text to support their beliefs. They were taken on that messianic mantle that you've mentioned many times. The Messiah didn't appear. They then took on that messianic mantle. To be a messianic mantle, you also have to have a revelation. So they would, they would take these writings, these homilies, these sermons, so to speak, written in Arabic, no dots there, because even though the dots did exist, because they were doing it shorthand. And then those later on, after the, were then put into books or into larger, what we now know as manuscripts. So what That's we see... Mushafs, mushafs. Mushafs, okay. Mushafs in Arabic is codex, is another word for codex. They're not scrolls, they're books that have pages. Mm -hmm. Okay, Fos, uh, fo uh, foil, fol um, what do they call it? Um, what's, uh, f um, anyway, folios. folios. They call them mm -hmm. folios in English, I guess the same word in, in French. So mushaf are a books with pages and a binding. They put them into uh, folios, but those... Kept, they kept the notes that were there earlier without the diacritical marks so that when the later scribes started adding their dots, they put dots where they wanted to because there was no original one they could point to that had the dots in there that they could use as a master. Am I correct on that? This is, this is exactly what François Desroches uh, found out found in, in, by studying the Petropolitanus uh, manuscript, okay. manuscripts, because that's a world. You're actually world hitting a huge, you're actually hitting a enormous controversy that is raging across the Muslim world and the academic world. I hope everybody's following this because this is hugely important. Everything that the standard Islamic narrative tells us 
is that this was done under Uthman in 652, mm-hmm. the standardization of the text with all the diacritical marks in place was created by Uthman, actually created by a guy named Zaid ibn Thabit, who had been the secretary of Muhammad himself. He was the one that was given that authority. And that happened in 652. And then according to the standard Islamic narrative, Al-Buhari, volume 6, hadith number 509 and hadith number 510, says that he then gave it to Uthman. Uthman sent it to the five cities, uh, Mecca, Medina, Basra, Kufa, and way up in, uh, well, way up this way, up in uh, Damascus, those five cities, and that those became the standard. And when you hear a Muslim today say, talk about it, they say those five manuscripts written in the Qureshi dialect, if it's Qureshi dialect, it has to have the diacritical marks introduced already in place in the 652, mid seventh century. You're saying, no, 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 no. There was no Uthmanic text. We can't find it today. First of all, there is nothing in Medina. There is no Qureshi. We didn't, we've already talked about that. The Qureshi don't exist in that place. In fact, you found the river Qureshi way up in Syria, way up in the north. There is, we don't know what this Qureshi, and, and, we, and we already know that the Arabic in that part of the world would have been Sabaic. It would not be in this Nabataean Aramaic or uh, Syriac Aramaic Syriac that would not have existed that far south that all exists up in Damascus and up in the north so you're saying that these leaders these messianic took it on the messianic mantle they were putting together these homilies they were putting together the text they had to come up with a reference to give not only for their believers but to give them authority and they didn't have mm-hmm. diacritical marks because they were in a hurry they were doing it quickly these were not intended to be a full manuscript, but when they were collected as full manuscripts, possibly in the late 7th century, early 8th century, mm-hmm. then they collected them as you're seeing here. And these are collections. We're looking at collections here. And these, that's why they're not complete. And that's why they don't necessarily agree with everybody, with each other. And there's different ways you can read them because these don't have diacritical marks in them. These manuscripts don't this have the diacritical marks. The mini kiras. You see, right. you, you only have different reading of a text. Because you're reading it, if you already know it by heart, if you already know the text, you, you, you don't have to, when you read a, a text without diatacritical marks, you, 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 can, you can gather it from it because you already know it. The, However, what about the next generation and the next generation? So now one reader has left, you have a next one, they read it. Well, then you start getting this problem. Everybody has a different way to read it because... They put their dots different than you put your dots. And so you have, you have over there, Huffs has a different way of reading, then Wash has a different way of reading, then Kalun has a different way of reading, and every one of them has tens of thousands. This tells us, this tells us that the, um, the Quran did not uh, come from an orality tradition. It was not uh, memorized by heart, and the people did not know it. It comes from a scripture tradition. It was transmitted as manuscripts, and the people did not know what the manuscript meant. They did not know the text. They did not. They they, they did. They haven't. They hadn't memorized it, and so they they read it the way they could. This explains the many different readings of the text. Listen, this has been terrific. There's many other questions we're going to ask about the Quran. This is the first one. Why is it important that the diacritical mark should have been added at the very beginning? If it is a written text, for heaven's sakes, stick the dots in there. If the dots existed, why Mm -hmm. weren't they put in there from the very beginning? That's the million-dollar question that no one wants to answer. The reason possibly is that these, these leaders, these amir, these messianic figures themselves were writing homilies they purposely did not keep the dots in there, and that's what caused the problem. Mm-hmm. God bless you. Thank you. We have some more questions. I'm going to bring them up next. But until now, this is Jay and Odin over and out. <laughs>